Hi, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, whichever time zone you are in or whichever part of the day that you are listening in. My name is Venkat, one of the co-founders of this initiative a few years ago. I'm someone who is passionate about technology and strongly believe in its ability to or the potential to address some of the chronic social issues we face in our country today. It's a joy for us to talk to you and have you in this journey of enabling really the quality education a dream come real, become a reality for our well-deserving children from the rural parts of this country. So in the next 10 minutes, uh, we will take this opportunity to share a holistic perspective about Evidya Loka. You might have come to know about through various websites and some contents here and through various other means about it. We would attempt to share a perspective which were probably not available uh, in those avenues. Let's take two steps back to understand the educational landscape of our country. So it was first in, in the late decades of uh, 60 and 70, 60s is when we started identifying the sector as a priority sector and included in our planning commission. We then framed our policies around it to boost it, uh, which is a critical factor, the path which we chose the industrial development. So as we kind of start focusing it in the late uh, 70s, and 80s, we started seeing that while well, we have school, but the children are not coming to the school. And uh, trace back to the reasons like the socio-economic reasons or malnourishment and nutrition issues were coming on the way, and which is where you start schemes like you saw schemes like midday meals and uh, uh, free uniform and uh, um, other incentives to bring the child to the school. And if you now traverse down to the late 90s or the early 2000 um, decade, uh, the focus has been on resurrecting the infrastructure in these schools. Some of these schools are really, really old, probably 80 years, 90 years, some of them are even 120 years old, uh, where it is all in dilapidated conditions. So you have some of these schemes from government like Sarvasiksha Abhiyan or various non-profit organizations or corporates investing in sprucing up the school infrastructure, pay, painting the classrooms, putting up bench, putting ceilings, girls' toilets, drinking water, etc., etc. So now, where are we today uh, in this decade, um, early to uh, mid of uh, this decade? Um, before we get there, uh, let's look at what we are talking about in terms of certain scale and number, actually, right? Any idea, I mean, how many number of schools do we have in this country today? That's a whopping 1.3 million schools. And guess what? 90% of them are in rural India and 85% of them are government schools. So we are today going to talk about those 70 to 80 million children in the age group of 10 to 14 in these million government schools. So today we have the children, child coming to the school, they have been fed, taken care of nutritional requirements, they have a place to, a comfortable place to sit and learn, but is the child really learning what he or she is supposed to learn? I think definitely uh, we, we all kind of know that the learning level uh, is suboptimal. Uh, and you can objectively trace back to some of the very credible reports like Asar, uh, which, ta which, which talks about uh, saying more than 75% of the children in grade 5 do not know what division means. More than 50% of the child cannot read a standard 2 text. And if you look back, why are we where we are here today actually? We kind of understood there are kind of top four reasons come into picture, right? One is the sheer shortage of teachers in these rural areas, quality people pursuing the profession of teaching. And two is the quality in teaching or the accountability of the existing teachers towards the learning outcome of the child. And you have few other reasons like your school leadership and, and the school dropout in itself due to economic conditions, which fortunately has been tapering down in the last decade where it is shifted from the primary to the above age standard grades actually. So now we looked at it at even the local to say let's pick top three two of these and see if we can address them uh, uh, provide a solution and why we believe that uh, while there may not be really teachers in these uh, uh, remote villages but there are people like you who are passionate about teaching want to give back to the society I mean you you, try, you share, carry the natural instinct to share knowledge and make see someone else successful. We believe there are many such people uh, spread across the globe and who are willing to give their time. And uh, we thought, why not we be a bridging platform in, in aggregating these disparately available people resources like you 
orchestrate it, channelize it and make it available to these remotely distributed rural villages across the country. So it is essentially addresses the shortage of teachers and the quality in teaching that happens in our government schools today. So when we say that, I mean, so what, do, what is Evidya Loka then? Uh, it is not really the online teaching that happens through a Skype or a Hangout or any particular technology that a teacher teaches to the child. That really is in an innovation. That is in a, it's a matter of fact. The real innovation that we believe is, is in the, the delivery model uh, that we are trying to explore and put in place. Uh, understanding what does it take to make such facility available to our rural as parts of our country. Uh, we try to present that in a few key, te few, few key tenets, uh, like as, we, as you see here, uh, the primary one being that we operate only in the rural areas, uh, where the government school is the only avenue of learning, and we want to ensure that there is access to quality education is provided to these children. Uh, the second key tenet is about partnership, where you, we might be sitting in, uh, uh, in, a, in a place like Bangalore, while why would a person in a village listen into what we say? The way in our, I mean, the ethos of our country is, is built on the trust and relationship and a local partner or a community is a lot more interested in seeing their community successful than you and me. Uh, hence, we strongly believe that uh, we always work through a local entity or a partner who has a vested interest and stay put in that location, who has access, instant access to the beneficiaries, in this case, the children and the government schools, etc. And we bring the educational service out of box to them, creating a very win-win synergy uh, in making this whole model work. Uh, the third key important thing is the, the language, the delivery is, happens in the, uh, the teaching happens in the local language uh, where uh, of, of that of the state board curriculum. Hence anyone who te teaches in this model, the basic prerequisite, your ability to read and write your local language as a mother tongue, where the child feels extremely comfortable uh, listening to someone speaking the language and the same as what is being taught at the school otherwise. Uh, the last but not the least is about we believe strongly in connecting people while a couple of us might have started this initiative but we truly believe for the magnitude of the problem that we see in this country it is important for us to community as a whole come around on this platform and directly address the issue uh, so we truly believe when there is a passionate teacher is connected to an earning child the quality in education is bound to happen I think. so now having said this uh, if i have to really take a quick shot and see how really the EVD Loka model works. Uh, we enter the village through a local partner um, who is operating in various other initiatives, uh, who in turn engages with the school and understand and evaluates the feasibility of a broadband connection being available. Uh, he also works with the local necessary government uh, bodies uh, to get the consent uh, to do this program and establishes uh, what we call it as a digital classroom in one of the identified classrooms in the school. Actually. It's nothing but a, a TV connected to a large screen uh, with a wide angle camera with a good noise cancellation mic that can capture up to 15 to 20 feet supported by an UPS system that can stand for three to four hours of time. So as far as the children is concerned, they will come into the classroom and instead of a physical teacher, they will see a teacher on a screen with whom they can interact and engage. Uh, now that we have this tab being set for ready for consumption by the children and in the school, we then reach out to people like you and say, hey, uh, can you spend two hours of your time uh, in week, two hours per week uh, in, in two different days as one hour slots? And we say not more than two hours of a time. Everybody has our own priorities in life. Can it make it as part of our practice and habit and a way of life uh, as we move along? We then aggregate seven or eight such people uh, and then make a holistic offering a per to a particular village teaching math, science and English for 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th grade children. Uh, now we have the demand to children in place on one side, we have you, you the teachers on the other side. What goes in between is the same as the school curriculum. As we have the classes happen within the government school during school hours, we also believe that the school curriculum is rich enough uh, and well thought out that needs to be uh, delivered to the child. It is just the how part of it has been a constant challenge which focused mostly on the road learning methodologies. Uh, so hence we follow the same uh, curriculum as of the state board. Now what the whole thing, the underneath platform that makes the whole connect happen is the My Evidya Loka technology platform which discovers the various processes that are involved and automates it and makes the experience seamless for you the teacher and the child. So now okay, how do we go about measuring this whole model? 
uh, while we measure various aspects of it, the key is we measure both the lead and lag parameters where how many classes are planned and how many delivered and how many teachers are being fulfilled for the need in the school and followed by what is the attendance of the children in the classroom. Even though it's happening in the school, it is not mandatory for the child to be in this classroom. Hence, he or she is going to attend only if the class is interesting. And of course, there is a formal structured assessment process that happens uh, twice uh, in a year, the term 1 and term 3. And we also measure the co-scholastic aspects of it and diagnose the uh, levels of the child and calibrate the curriculum accordingly. So now where we are actually, so the journey that started in 2011 as one school in a pilot, uh, we had did a pilot for two years between 11 and 13 and uh, with, with five schools and from there onwards we had established a scaling up plan to go from five villages to 50 villages as we uh, as, as end of this March 2016 we will be completing 50 villages close to 3000 children learning uh, over a lakh and 75,000 child learning hours being delivered by 338 teachers across various parts of this world actually. So we now from where from here to where uh, we intend to uh, really add a few more villages uh, uh, in this year double up the capacity from 50 to 100 villages and add few more states like West Bengal, Maharashtra, Orissa and Hindi apart from the current states of Jharkhand, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. So we are really looking forward to have more people on board and uh, uh, and that, that's it's kind of probably uh, I'll take a pause here uh, for you to kind of reflect and uh, uh, take the journey forward from here. We really would like to share this as part of our initial uh, in engagement or interaction with you. So what really are the next steps uh, for you? Uh, uh, feel free to go back, go to the FAQ section to get any or many of your queries clarified and of course complete the onboarding process where you would have a small self-evaluation and a discussion with one of our panel members for 20 minutes. Um, of course, you can connect and engage and collaborate with your fellow community uh, members uh, through the forums that is there in place. We have the blogs and soon we are also coming out with a social platform in which you can engage and interact with the fellow passionate individuals who are participating in this journey. With this, I will take my break here and look forward to see you soon teaching our children very, very shortly. Thank you very much.